Welcome to the Walk of America podcast one. We are currently in Dallas, Texas. The team have completed week one of their journey and are about to start on week two tomorrow. Uh, let's start with Larry. My name is Larry Hinkle. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Served in the United States Marine Corps 2000 to 2004. My name is Adele Lohr. I'm from Rhode Island and I served in the U.S. Air Force from 1989 to 2010. My name's Kevin Carr. I'm from Newcastle, England. I served in the British Army Royal Logistic Corps for five years. My name's Johnny Burns. I served in the British Army Infantry for eight years, 2008 to 2016. My name is Frankie Perez. I serve in the US Army Infantry from 2001 to 2015. My name's Kevin Whittlesey. I served in the Royal Signals for 15 years. I'm from England. And how's week one been? Awesome, <laughs> awesome, good, brilliant, <laughs> fabulous. What was the best bit? Meeting the team for me. Yeah, yeah. gathering Meet together, the team. becoming th- a wolf pack. Yeah, <laughs> so I think learning a, learning about each team member has been cool. You get to kind of spend a lot of time talking to each other when you're walking. So each person kind of gets to, you know, work their way back or work their way up. I like that. And it's always comfortable when you're with your own that you feel comfortable talking about your issues because nobody's going to judge you because we all have them. Plus, getting to see the Brits, man, that haven't got to see like California. That's yeah. a great state that to tour, that, man. That we have here in the states for for veterans. Huh? Yeah, sure I that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm glad we're in Texas. <laughs> but y'all saw how much love California gave. It's a military state, and uh, it'll be the same here in Texas as I'm well. I'm just glad I'm over here. Full stop. I've loved every day of it. Yeah, I've got like a zest of life. All yeah. of a sudden, I, like I'm waking up now in the morning. I'm smiling. I'm looking forward. Yeah. Like to what's happening that, that day. Normally, I would be full of anxiety. Right. That's awesome. And the different terrains that we've faced. Mm-hmm. Like today, we could be in the city. Tomorrow, mm-hmm. we could be in, in the desert, and so on, so on. So you never know what's what's gonna happen, and and all the good stuff that we're gonna get to see. I like the off trail walking best. Oh yes. That was beautiful out there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Not to mention the people we get to meet along the way. Yes. You all know? the veterans that get along on this walk as well. I've, I've enjoyed them when other people are coming out, you know, and walking with them, mm-hmm. like different organisations. That, that's that been like really honourable as well, that. just yeah. walking along, chatting to them, finding out their stories and what they do, their background. Yeah. yeah. It's not what I've expected though. It's not what I had in my head before I come out here. It's not the way that I thought the expedition was going to be. What did you have in your head? Um, from the way that it was put across that we'd be touring across America with the vehicles, in between the vehicles, as in like, one big unit showing that everyone this is what we're doing at the minute we well we've just spent a week going through california and most of it seemed to be we were just guys off on a walk or is that that's how other people perceived it no one really knew what we were doing so i think this week's going to be really different just for the fact that we've got the flags and everyone can see oh hang on a minute this this isn't a normal walk that's going going on on here yeah. And then they'll take more interest, and I, I think we'll get more of a buzz this week than we did last week. Mm-hmm. Every week we're gonna get more, yeah. more, more of that. Not being yeah. mistaken for little pickers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks for cleaning the beach, man. <laughs> 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 Definitely. Or what's HH stand for? Yeah. 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 So uh, for for people that are out here in Dallas, maybe you could tell everybody last week. You know, any sort of particular encounters you, you had? So, for example, I understand when you went off trail, you came across some local wildlife. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I'd never go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was putting snake watch. Uh, I found a couple of rattlesnakes, which are pretty cool. Did you choose to be on snake watch? I did, yeah. <laughs> Mission accomplished. It's pretty good. Yeah. Mission good though. Especially good in the spotter. desert when you're here. He sort of guided off from the rest of and he ended up behind bushes. And was, what are you doing? Looking for snakes. <laughs> trying to take over David Atten for his job. Got the crocodile on him. Steve Irwin. Lift, lifting up rocks. And... It's well, a bugger little see. fella. <laughs> Excellent. Good stuff. And I mean, also, there have been fun times and been challenging times. And we, um, we were in Disneyland and yeah, Mickey Mouse let off his nightly... <laughs> house party which yeah. is obviously fireworks and obviously for a couple of you guys it was 
a bit of a challenge. It'd be great maybe if you could explain that because hopefully there'll be people listening to this who would probably like to. Yeah, and so I think it's a very helpful way of explaining this, what you guys yeah, be- go before anyone Before anyone says anything, but it wasn't just fireworks, it's the fact that it was so loud, it mm-hmm. echoed, everything rattled, and the kids were screaming outside. And setting and, off car alarms. Yeah, mm-hmm. and all in one sort of... Really intense. Yeah, thing. Bang! Was, Larry could tell you, I was taking a shower and when that thing came up, um, I screamed like, Larry, what is that? And he's like, Frank, it's just fireworks. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> it scares me. It yeah. shook the room, it really did. <laughs> uh, it scared me, like, at one point I was in tears and uh, Del had to take us to the car park and uh, a couple of other members of staff, like Kate and uh, Vix, and uh, had to go like as far far into the car park as I possibly could. It was horrible. And I, I think as well, from some of us who are civilians, it was extraordinary to see the effect. Oh. As I jumped clean out of my skin. You know, yeah, me too. And, I, and then looking at the... So I think in a way, although it was tra- you know, challenging for you guys, it was a really very visceral lesson that happened very early on. You know, that actually helped us understand to the extent of what you guys have to deal with. Anyhow, on a lighter note, we set sail. Where did we head to after that? Where we're at the Palm Desert. Yep. yep. And the Palm Desert, you said, was quite a lot of you said that it was one of the a great walking day. Yeah. The views and uh, just the feelings that you that you had while you were on top of the mountain. That's what you came to America for. That's what I came to America for. That's the day I think I found my zest. <laughs> I'd Why? Still, Why? What made you feel like that? It was just big. When, like, halfway up that peak, I was just looking about, there was nothing there, and I was like, this is just so beautiful. And it gave us time to actually think mm-hmm. about a lot of things. Like, when we've been walking through the town, we've had, like, buildings, and you know what I mean? Like, obviously, the views are quite restricted, and you constantly, like, do risk assessments, like, you know, like, crossing roads and all that. But going up there, it was just a trail. It's nice. And it was absolutely well. beautiful. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's when I actually found, realised, you know, what it is. It was, went, it was when Kemsley pulled the pizza out of his bag. Kev's face <laughs> just lit up. <laughs> <laughs> Desert pizza. Desert pizza. <laughs> yeah. Highest altitude pizza for Newcastle. Yeah, I think yeah. it was a low point and a high point for me. One being, you know, uh, getting sick and having to leave the team, but also seeing the support that the team, you know, say, "Hey, oh, yeah. take care of yourself. We got your back." That was kind of, you know, gives me goosebumps thinking about. So yeah, that's what we're here for. I can agree with that. For me, it was a high and a low that day. As much as it was really good, at the same time, it was really. A- my anxiety was through the roof and when we got to the top of the hill because some things had happened and been said the day before and it played on my mind and I hadn't been to sleep and I spoke to Vix and I asked her like for a bit of advice because I'm the type of person that lets things get to me, get to me, get to me, get to me, get to me and then I'll blow up and I'll overreact or I'll say something that I don't want to say and it just comes out and Vix was like no just, just go up there and have a chat with the guys so when we got to the top of the to top of the hill, I sat everyone down and I was like, "Look, I just want to talk with you all." And I explained about me and how I feel and how my brain works and the fact that for so long I'm just used to my own company and not, I'm not used to having all these people around me every day. And this is totally out of my comfort zone every single day. But I need to do it in order to get myself better up here. Yeah, and it was nice to everyone kind of took that in and understood from that point because I think until then people couldn't quite understand me like why is he acting the way that he does or why does he react the way that he does to things that get said or why is he walking ahead on his own all the time and do you think you having that conversation up there has has made you closer as a as a team the fact that one of you has made that move to like look this is me oh like, massively massively yeah. like yeah. Me, me me and John like we had, we had a disagreement it was, it was stupid, there was no need for it to happen, but John came up to me after that, as soon as we got back, and he was like, do you know what, I admire what you just done then. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, having that from an ex-British Army officer means a lot. Mm-hmm. So I respected him a lot more for saying that. Yeah. 
this awesome. is a learning process for all of us like mm -hmm. every day we learn from each other and and the beauty of this team is the respect that we have for each other you know like we don't judge we actually we encourage to, <laughs> to do better and to do good stuff for the team and, and that's the beauty of this i could i couldn't be more happy with that right and you've all clearly been supporting each other i mean kev has had a really nasty blister you've all had <laughs> nasty blisters i think <laughs> but i mean just the support that you're giving each other it's clear it's evident how are you guys feeling physically versus how you would expect to feel Do you know i mean i've never walked the rate that you guys have walked every day and we, we are you at a point where you go oh, i'm kind of comfortable or like oh that was a little <coughs> bit tougher than i was expecting uh, i hike I 15 oh i'm sorry i hike 15 to 20 miles in the mountains mm -hmm. and that's a hell of a lot easier than walking 15 20 miles on concrete yeah yeah, yeah. Right. yeah you're, totally you're doing agree. the same footsteps your your calves don't the stretch there's the nothing it's just and after you know 15 20 miles uh, it Different muscles definitely hurt, and yeah, the blisters. I don't think <laughs> suck. I think we all underestimated how tough it actually is, and I think even people like when you turn around, oh yeah, I'm walking a thousand miles across mm -hmm. America, and I've got 14 weeks to do it. They're like, oh yeah, you're going for a big long walk. Like to them, it's just a walk until you physically get out there. I can confirm a lot of my friends think you're idiots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, what? Like so a lot of marathon of runners and things support, have yeah. turned round and said. Like, we admire you because we run these distances that you're walking and we would never walk them distances because we know how much it hurts, especially the next day. And when you're doing 20 miles and then you're getting up and you're doing another 20 miles, you're not getting that rest. And by the end of the week, you, you are sore. I, can, I think everyone can turn around and say that by the end of last week, we were hurting. It's but a couple we of days through too. It together. A couple of days rest too. And then the aches and pains start creeping in since we're not yeah. walking. And yeah. I, th I personally thought I, my body would have been in a state, but I feel that I'm surprised like that I feel a bit fresher than what I thought I would be. I and how do you feel ahead of next week? Because you've really, done it. Really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. A, obviously, yeah. because we've done a week with slightly no, you know what I mean, what to expect. Um, which, personally, for me, makes things a lot easier like yeah. I think I'm Texas is one of the most attractive from a British perspective Texas is one of the most attractive states to, so to be here and to be able to walk from one end to the other and to visit some amazing places on the way it's, it's going to be min this, this, this is going to be far better than California well depending on that heat <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm the scared heat of the heat will be challenging yeah. <laughs> will be for me build some we'll character we'll <laughs> especially being like a milk bottle you know what I mean <laughs> strawberry milk you know I'm going to come out like a lobster <laughs> <laughs> you're I mean, turning how, how hot was it today like 103 100 degrees wow. there will be a book published at the end called 50 Shades of Kev <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to document him the whole way through <laughs> and just kind of keeping it light um, because we'll hopefully do this once a week where do you go at the end like so I'm going to interview and it'd be quite interesting to see expectations versus yeah at the yeah, end so for example just off the bat like if you could just let us know at the moment what you're most looking forward to is your particular destination is your particular day or anything like that and it'll be interesting to see at the end whether it marries up or whether something completely unexpected blew you away so uh, off the top of my head I'm looking for I'm a Cubbies fan, Chicago Cubs, so I'm looking forward to Chicago. I know we'll end it in uh, Soldier Field one day, I believe. I'm really looking forward to that. That's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time. I'm looking forward to seeing the Grand Tetons and Mount Rushmore and hiking in that whole area because, well, I'm a hiker and that's what I love. So I'm looking forward to the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Why? I? Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to testing myself in the heat. You know what I mean? It, it'll be a challenge in the one that I, I'm thriving. Well, and as you, much as you sustain those blisters and you pulled through with that, you know, I've flying new colors, I have no now. doubt you'll do this. And yeah. you said you were looking forward to National uh, Yellowstone National Park. Yes, yes that's that's my sort of terrain. I love yeah, it. Great. I love it. Yeah, Yellowstone's going to be great just for the fact that we're camping out. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's where we can all let loose and actually enjoy ourselves. We're away from everything. We don't we don't need to worry about people taking pictures of us mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. being like, oh, look what these guys are doing because no one's going to be there. Apart well, from me. Snapping <laughs> 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 everything. I may look forward to here in Austin. I, I'm dying to go and visit uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan statue see the wolf as well and the Yellowstone and just getting into New York Ground Zero having that vibe yeah. as we arrive at the Jazz Bar as well yes. if that still goes ahead I'm really looking forward to that so yeah. there's a lot New Orleans Nashville for me <laughs> yeah Ooh. the music and the food yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go you guys are going to have a Good band challenge. by the end of the oh, yes. I'll tell you yeah. yeah. know it we have the Puerto Rican pool boy as our yeah. lead singer over there. I see what's being put at the top of the corridor as well for you. There's a baby cot. Yeah, is it? <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, right. I think um, that's been brilliant. Thank uh, you very much. And very quickly, finally, maybe you should ask them, like, what are you guys listening to on the road music-wise? Yeah, yeah. seeing so you're really passionate about your music. And Yellow Wolf. Yeah. Hakuna Matata, stuff like that, you know, really good He's stuff. He's got the Disney so playlist. <laughs> We don't have the choice of that because we don't have an American SIM card. Ah. <laughs> so our walks are very long, <laughs> tedious. Uh, we'll have to sort out some music for you. I'm not well, going to say drive us with the radio on. John has become fluent and passive aggression. He's already <laughs> <laughs> Larry. I'm going to stay away from Mexican fish tacos as well because oh, yeah. they are disgusting. <laughs> Larry, what were you listening to in Disneyland? Uh, you told me I was, name was George, George Strait. George Strait. Uh, uh, you know, anywhere country to uh, punk to a uh, couple of rap songs, um, some heavy, heavy hard rock. Mm. We're going to have to get you guys a boombox. So yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, all sort of. That's a good idea. (laughs) Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Right on. Thank you. It's our pleasure.